the NBA playoffs have created moments like Steph Curry dropping 50 in a game seven versus the Kings in a raucous arena. Jimmy Butler in the heat beating the number one seed uh, Milwaukee Bucks four games to one. James Harden dropping 45 in game one versus the Celtics top rated defense. And of course, LeBron and the Lakers beating the Memphis Grizzlies four games to two after Dylan Brooks poked the bear. Which of these playoff moments is your favorite so far? Jimmy Butler and the Heat beating the Bucks four to one. That is my favorite playoff moment this season. Jimmy Butler single handedly, in my opinion, with a bunch of guys that they got um, from uh, pickup games because they're undrafted, right? Came in, showed them exactly what he culture can do, and beat the Bucks. The Bucks, even without Giannis, should have still been able to win that series because they have players that have been solid players on the roster for all season. Mm -hmm. Although Giannis is their biggest superstar, and yes, they we would love to have Giannis on the court. The Bucks could not pull off a win in this series without him. Stop. No, Jimmy Butler. And not only that, Jimmy Butler and the Heat team fought their way to even get to round one of the playoffs. And Jimmy Butler and the Heat is proven to the NBA community that the regular season don't mean nothing to us. So, yes, 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 that one is my favorite. Yes, and it's my favorite moment as well. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. If you want to know what sheer will to win looks like, look no further than Jimmy Butler. What? Jimmy Butler, the gentleman sweep against the number one team in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> it's my favorite moment, the way he did it. Oh, man, coming from the depths of the play-in tournament into the playoffs and looking like they're getting ready to not only, you know, not only, they, they're getting ready to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's just go ahead and put that on out just there. go ahead and claim it now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Knicks. And have a great summer. What are we talking about? Like the, the heat, Jimmy Butler and the heat. It's so appropriate. Speechless. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite moment. <laughs> my, my favorite moment. I know. Steph Curry putting up 50. Cute. He's done it in the past. And I suspect he will do it in the future. Sometime in this next series that he's currently in. I can see it happening. And we'll be just as surprised with that as well. I mean, come on. He's the number one. What, what did he get this? What did he just win a award for last season? What was oh, it? most three points. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Curry. Curry been 50 points. What are we talking about? Right? This mm -hmm. is his first one. And it won't be his last. So, now, okay, that's cute. James Harden. Wow. Mm. But, and then uh, Dylan Brooks poking the bear. What else was he supposed to do? We love that narrative. Now we don't like it anymore. Whatever. Yes. And my thought process was similar to yours. I'm like, oh, Steph Curry, you know, he did what he had to do, but he also went 20 for 38, you know, from the field, seven for 18 from three points just to get the 50 points. I ain't taking nothing away from Stephen Curry, but it's just not my favorite moment. Right. And James Harden, when he dropped 45, it was without MB in the next game. He went two for 14, 0 for six from the three point range and scored 12 little points. What? Mm -mm. And I originally picked the Sixers to win that series. I've since changed my <laughs> changed my mind. What? And then the LeBron and Dylan Brooks situation that that was one of my favorite series to watch. What would the series look like without trash talk from the Memphis Grizzlies? You know, now it, as LeBron is continuing to play right now, and the Memphis Grizzlies are at home, and Dylan Brooks is somewhere on a trading block. You know, everybody's still talking about pouring honey on the bear and, oh, look at you poke the bear. It's it's going to live on forever. So really, Dylan Brooks won in that because people still talking about him. They wouldn't be talking about him right now had it not been for his trash talk with LeBron James. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just yeah, whatever. Whatever. That's whatever. But Jimmy Butler in the heat. That's the one. That is the one. Now, you know, as usual, you know, I know you always got a bonus playoff moment. <laughs> Which let me hear it. Let me hear your bonus moment. I mean, it just recently happened. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Devin Booker and his forty-seven points he put on uh, the different Nuggets the other night. Oh, I would be remiss. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he was able to at least, at least hold off a, a three-zero um, playoff run, like where he where the 
he was at least able to hold off, slow down the series by getting one win for the Suns, at least one, <laughs> right? So, yeah, no, that was huge for the Suns. And so, yeah, Devin Booker in his 47 piece, absolutely. Currently, one of my favorite moments. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was, whew, now that's a moment. But you know what? My moment came from Patrick Beverly off the court, but during the playoffs. During his podcast, he said he ran into Russell Westbrook, my Brody, at the gym. And he said that <laughs> they came up with this idea that if the Lakers were to win the championship, both him and Russell Westbrook deserve an NBA championship ring. I said, oh, well, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Hey, if Jerry Dudley and Casas Antetokounmpo and Bucks uh, Danasis Antetokounmpo can get a ring and JTA can get a ring from the Golden State Warriors and Andre Iguodala can get a ring, why not? Why not? Mm. They're not doing nothing that has a precedent has not already been set for. I'm not surprised, but absolutely. If Jerry Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> what? Excuse me? He, he got a ring. <laughs> he did. He did and Russ, he say his name. That's cold. <laughs> Russell yeah. Westbrook played 45 games for the Los Angeles Lakers. He started three games, was looking at being the sixth man of the year. Yeah. What? what? Patrick Beverly, he started all of his games, 26 minutes, and he only got six points and three rebounds. But, hey, they were the trade pieces that the Lakers used to get who they have right now. And I'm sick of hearing about the Lakers. Oh, they started the 2-10, and 10, 13th in the West. Yeah, but they made the trade. This is not like they came from where they were when they were 2-10 and 10 with the same squad. Absolutely. They had to use these trade pieces and Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook in order to get the pieces that they currently have so that we can see what they look like right now. So, yeah, I believe Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook deserve the NBA championship ring if the Lakers were to win, but I don't have them win the NBA championship. So maybe my whole argument doesn't mean anything. <laughs> no, but the, but the, thought, the, the, the thought about it, yes. I agree 100%. Is this a new thought? If it's brand new, then we talk about it differently. But this is not, that ain't nothing. What? what? However, I don't know. I can see uh, Patrick Beverly showboating this ring around. I just don't see Russell Westbrook, although he deserves the ring. I don't see him showboating it around. He wasn't there when it went. If the win happened, he's not going to be there. You know, it's, it's probably going to be like how Matt Barnes feels about it. Thank you for my ring, Warriors. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I didn't really do too much to contribute to it, you know. So, yeah. But you know what? Pat Beverly's – we had that conversation offline. You felt the, the need to come bring it to your podcast. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like to do that. I don't like that. But anyway, get a man's – get a man's. They rings. <laughs>